1 Thessalonians 5.11, therefore encourage one another and build up one another, just as in fact you are doing. And Romans 15.5, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had. So as a church family, it's really important that we encourage each other and we're building each other up. Church comes with its own difficulties and its own responsibilities and sometimes we get wrapped up in our jobs and letting people know what their job is and what they're doing on the road today that we forget to just say thank you or you know what you did an amazing job today, you greeted everybody into church really well. Um, I think it's just so important that we build each other up, especially in the day and age that we're in today with mental health and things like that. It's a really difficult evil world that we live in where you're constantly thinking that you're not good enough so as a church family it's so important that we encourage and build each other up just as God does to us so how do we encourage and build each other up has anybody got any suggestions yeah say nice things to people say nice things anybody else you can shout hi just time for each other time for each other yeah that's good yeah, Hope I love your hugs. <laughs> <laughs> They're all really valid. That's They're all true. What's your um, suggestion? What was your suggestion, Edward? Edward? No. Shall we come back to you later? Okay. <laughs> right, Crystal, if you'd like to take off the next bit for me very carefully. <laughs> with help because there's some underneath. Yeah. So I've written down ten ways that we can build each other up. And what everybody said is valid. And it's true, but it's also important that we follow these steps. Can you manage? Yeah. Right, so we've got number one. Esteem others higher. So have high regard, regard and great respect and favourable thoughts of other people. Just like Jesus loved us that much, that's how we should be with each other. Second one is be wise in your speech. This is something that I am trying to learn. I've asked God for wisdom <laughs> because quite so often we're quick to say what we think, and even if that is a valid thing that we need to say, if we don't say it in the right way, we're just dismaying people. And if we want to build this church and let people, yeah, build each other and let people know about Jesus then we need to be wise about our speech and wise about the words we say. An example I'll give you is, so there's a child drawing on a wall with crayon. I'm sure we've all had this as mothers, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes. the parent goes up to them and says, Oi, pack it in, what are you doing? That's disgusting, wipe that off now, never do that again. And what happens? <laughs> the kid does it again because you've not said it in the right way so even sometimes then they turn into graffiti artists yeah. <laughs> or jail who knows don't shout at your kids anyway um, yeah so my point is we can still encourage be encouraging while also telling people that they're doing something wrong as long as we say it in the right way so an example of how that parent instead could have done that they could have said I love that artwork. I would have loved it more on a piece of paper. But don't do that again because you're a big boy now. Or you're a big girl now. Now I know we're not going to go around to each other in church and say that. But we can go up to each other and say, yes, what you did wasn't particularly right. Thank you for sharing it with me. But you're better than that. And that stops people from, if you you go to someone and say, oh, you should know better than that. It's completely different. You're better than that, and you should know better than that. I'm completely different. You should know better than that is guilt. You're making somebody feel guilty. You're better than that is affirming to somebody that they are worth something. Mm. And it's really important that we do that as Christians. It's true. Number three, be encouraging. Express an assurance of hope and future in ways. Okay, so my example is going to be Matt. So my encouraging words for Matt are the amount, and you can say this to each other in your own time, but the amount that you have come on that over the past few years, I am so proud of you, I really am. The leader inside of you is really starting to shine now, and God's able to use you because you are becoming more humble, 
And we, I can see it shining out of you, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm really proud of the man that you are becoming. I'm proud to be your wife. Oh, that is nice. Okay, number four. Be quick to forgive. Again, something that I need to work on. When Dad was preaching the other week, he said women remember things. So when we have an argument with our partner, we go, do you remember last month you did this, last week you did this, last year you did this, blah, 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 blah. We're not forgiving if we hold on to things. Does Jesus hold on to our past sins? No. Or does he forgive us? Oh, yeah, he forgives us. So if we want to love people like Jesus loved us, what should we do? Forgive, forgive people. Which means Amen. Go. Release others from guilt and shame as our Father forgives us. Number five, it goes hand in hand with being understanding of someone's situation, so it is. Be understanding. Be understanding. <laughs> so be understanding of, situ of someone's situation. You might not have been in that situation. <coughs> you might not be able to sympathise on an emotional level because it hasn't happened to you. But you can be understanding. I think quite often where we go wrong is someone will come to us and say, oh, I had a really bad week. And then you'll go, I know, tell me about it. Guess what happened to me? This, this, this and this. Are we being understanding? Are we allowing that person to be able to truly talk to us about what's going on in their lives? Yeah. I mean, if we prayed every time to Jesus and said, oh, I'm really struggling with this, and he just went, well, guess what? I am every single person to talk to in the world. I've created the world, and I really don't have time for you. How would that make us feel? Sad. Sad. Exactly. Well, <laughs> so, we must be understanding of other people's situation, even if we can't sympathise, even if we don't say anything at all and we just listen. Okay, the next one we've got is, what is it? Zero gossip. Zero gossip. So, does anybody know the game Chinese Whispers? Yes. Yes. So you start off by saying one thing, and then by the time it's gone around everybody, it's something completely different. Yeah. I do not want any of that in church. In fact, I don't want any of it in our lives. Because what does gossip help? It doesn't help anybody. No. Jesus has a long list of our, all our wrongdoings, but it doesn't go around warning every other single Christian in the church so, so that when we walk in the door, they already know all our business. That's between us and God, it's not between everybody else in the church. And if somebody is confident enough to come to you with an issue that they're struggling with, then you keep it to yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this in a lecturing way whatsoever, but if we truly want to love each other and truly want to support each other, we need to be that safe haven for <coughs> each other. And by being safe, it's not passing on our words to other people. Mm -hmm. And I've been guilty of this, I've done it, Every, I think at some point everybody has done it, but guess what, yep. oh, guess what happened, guess what I'm doing, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but we shouldn't do it, we know we shouldn't do it, the only positive things should we be saying about each other, yeah. how we want others to see us is how we should be seeing and speaking about people, yeah. mm. Okay, share knowledge of your own experience to encourage. This is something that I think I'm quite good at, actually. If someone will come to me and say, I'm really struggling with this, I'll, I'll let them speak, I'll let them air out, and then I'll say, do you know what, I've been through something similar, and this is what really helped me, and this is what the Bible says. So if you have been through the same experience, you can say, oh, let's, even if you don't know, let's have a look and see if we can find a Bible verse, which is exactly on what you're going through. That's, that's sharing knowledge. That's sharing knowledge of the Bible. Yeah. That's how we can support each other. Yeah. It's a lot better than saying, oh, let me pour you a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do like a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> All the secrets are coming out now. <laughs> so when you are encouraging people and helping people, and sharing your knowledge, and then all these people are saying, oh, do you know, she really helped me, or she really helped me, and can you believe what she did? She came over and she helped me do this, and she helped me do that, and then what are we in risk of? As the person who's doing this, I've done this, I've done that, because my head's inflating, oh, I helped that person, do you know that person's so much better because of me? 
So number eight is to be humble, yeah. because actually it's not because of me, it's not because of you, it's because of the love and the understanding that God gives us is how we pass it on to other people. So it reminds me of that song, when I'm doing well, help me never to seek a crown, so my reward oh, is yeah. giving glory to you. Yeah. I love that song. <laughs> Let's sing that. We'll, we'll sing that at the end, because I do, I love that song. So it's important to remember God used me. We always remember I didn't do this, God did this through me. And that helps us to stay humble. Okay, number nine. It goes hand in hand with number ten, but we'll we'll talk about number nine first. Be positive. Be positive. So <laughs> Annabelle, where are you? So in Sunday school, we've been looking at boosting up each other up and we've been writing things that we like about each other. Okay? And Annabelle did one that was on the hurl for everybody and it just it's relevant to positivity, so I'm just going to get to read it. Just show it, just show it, Annabelle. Always think positive, not ne- negative. God, God always wants you to be happy and joyful, not sad. Okay. We can be positive and easily positive in encouraging people we love. So that falls hand in hand with number 10. The difficulty is when if we don't particularly love that person or we don't particularly like that person, how are we still going to be positive? How are we still going to be positive towards them? And the way I would do that is if you look in the Bible, people were horrible to Jesus. Yeah. They didn't want him around. He was no good. But did he still want to be around them? Was he still, to a certain degree, was he, he was still positive, wasn't he? Yeah. He still wanted to save everybody. Yeah. He changed people's hearts and minds. And he can change ours. Just because we don't particularly like somebody, we should pray on that over and over and over until we love that person. Because we're called to love everybody. So being positive, which is obviously a lot more difficult if you don't love the person, but a lot easier if you do love the person, I think. Which comes hand in hand with number 10. Love. Love the person. If you... Go through life thinking of everybody as your daughter or your sister or your wife or your husband. You're going to treat them so much more differently. Yeah. You'll always have time for them. You'll always have respect for them. You'll always listen to them. Because at the end of the day, that's how we're treated. We're children of God. Mm-hmm. And he always has time for us. When our children come to us and say, oh, I've done this wrong, what do we say? We say, it's okay because I love you. I might not like what you've done, but I love you. And the most important thing that we are called to do is to love one another. That is true. And uh, the biggest thing for me that stands out for that is Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind. It keeps no records of wrongdoings. A great man in the Bible who gave a great example of how to be an encouragement and had a Christ-like mind was Barnabas. So if you want to pull off the next one for me, please. You got it? Yeah. Well done. So this is Barnabas. This is my yeah. art skills. That's <laughs> good. Very accurate. It's better than mine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, draw it for you. <laughs> so I've just written around him these scriptures. Um, in the Bible that you can look up. Just sit down for me up at sweetheart, you've done an amazing job. That you can look up. So if anybody wants to take a picture of this after, just so you can find out a little bit more about him. I'm going to give you a brief. These are what my notes look like, so if I don't make much sense. <laughs> okay, so Barnabas, his name was given to him, nicknamed by the Apostle, so his original name was Joseph. And as you can see here, Joseph means he will add or increase. And then he was given the name by the apostles Barnabas. 
because it means son of encouragement. Son of encouragement. Barnabas was given God's love, God's encouragement, and he increased it to others. He gave it out to others. He was actually one of the first people to start being a Christian. Because before they called it Christ-like, which then developed into Christians, which is what we call ourselves today, which you can have a look, look up in the Bible about that. Okay. So he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, which is from Acts 11, 24. Barnabas, he sold a piece of his land and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. This is Acts 4, 37. So already he's sold what he's got to give towards the church, to further God's kingdom. I'm not saying we have to do that. We don't have to give everything we have. But we do have to encourage other people. Okay, so he didn't want to bear in the church for support while he was in ministry, so he also supported himself financially. Now, Barnabas kind of reminds me of my dad. <laughs> he said he does. So he's there to support everybody else and to encourage everybody else, and he gives himself selflessly. But he will not ask others for help. He will support himself so we can keep giving. And most of you know that Dad has just recently got a job so we can carry on his financially with money. And also so we can carry on in what God's told him to do, which is to build up churches and to encourage others and to bring others to God. Now Barnabas, he was such a humble man. He was so humble, he didn't look for no reward, he looked for no crown. Again, I believe, like my dad, and we're here to encourage each other, so sorry for putting you on the spot, Dad, but <laughs> that's what I honestly believe. He never looked for a crown. He modelled Christ with his words and his actions and his conduct alongside Peter in, I can't pronounce this very well, Anti Antico, can you say it better? Antioch. Yeah, Antioch. Thank you. <laughs> yes, let me start that again. He modelled Christ for his words, actions and conduct alongside Peter in Antioch. This is where they brought people in and they spread Jesus' message. So for this man to be so encouraging and make such an impact that they changed his name from Joseph to Barnabas because... That's what he was known for. He was this massive, mighty man of encouragement because he got it from God. And funnily enough, what his name used to be and then what they renamed him, it's just an increase of encouragement. So we should strive to be more like Barnabas and I would encourage you all to read up on him because it's, it is good. Next, please. <laughs> how God sees us, what he says of us, so we can share his love for us, his love, his encouragement for us, and we can encourage others with this love. So what does the Bible say about us? It's fair enough saying I'm going to go and I'm going to encourage all these people, but if you're running on empty, how are you going to do it? If you've got a jug full of water and you pour it into individual glasses and you give it to people and you're all left with an empty jug, how, how are you going to do it? The way that we refill and stop the devil coming in with his, nobody likes you, you're not important, you're ugly. The way that we stop that is by refilling ourselves with the word of what God says about us. And then we can share that with everybody else. So what does God say? about us. Yeah. Do you want to shout that out for me? We have power. Be confident of sound mind. We are loved. We will be richly rewarded, fearfully and wonderfully made. We are his treasured position. 
Possession. 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 And the most important one. God's masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. That's what the Bible says. He said, the Bible says we are his masterpiece. That's the most amazing title. So I'm going to read where these come from. Okay. So 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So we just declare that. Can you all say power? Power. Power. Can you all say love? Love. Can you all say sound mind? Sound mind. It's true. The word says it's true. We need to proclaim it over ourselves as well. Right, right. Hebrews 10.35. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to preserve so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he says, what he has promised. So can everybody say, I will be confident. I will be confident. I will be confident. I will be richly rewarded. I will be richly rewarded. Persevere. Persevere. I will receive what he has promised. I will receive what he has promised. Okay, Psalms 139.14. I praise you, everyone's got to know this one, because I am Your works are wonderful and we are his works. We're wonderful, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. I mean, that just really makes me smile because yeah. I quite often think so little of myself. But that's what he says about me. So I need to believe it. We're just going to say that one more time. I am. Fearfully and wonderfully made. And we've got Deuteronomy. I can never pronounce that. Deuteronomy. Thank you. 2618 says, The Lord has declared we, have, we are his treasured possession. So everybody, you know what you've got to say? Treasured possession. possession. Well done. Yes. I can't say that one either. Ephesians 2.10. This is the New Living Translation, so it can be different in some. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things that he has planned for us. Yes. So we are God's masterpiece. So this one, I want us to really shout, because this one really screamed at me. I would never, ever put myself as a masterpiece. That is right but if he says it we need to believe it so we speak against the enemy with it are we ready I am God's masterpiece well done children right the children have been working so hard in preparation for this haven't you so at Sunday school like I said we wrote what we like about each other what we love about each other just hang fire kiddies so that we could give them to everybody in the church. So you have them as a reminder. Okay, this is what God says about you. This is how other people see you. So this is how you should see yourself. And this is how you should encourage <coughs> others. Once we are encouraged, we should give it. And I'm standing on a rock, on a rock of ages, stand. Never change. Never change.